right, so get this. AI is now like a top 200 programmer in the world. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. I know. So today we're going to do a deep dive into what that actually means. Uh -huh. We've got this awesome YouTube video essay as our guide. Perfect. And, you know, we'll try to, like, figure out the implications of, you know, AI getting this yeah. good, especially for, like, you know, you, the listener who wants to stay out of the curve. Definitely. So this video essay, it makes this really interesting comparison between, like, what's happening now with AI and what happened with, like, personal computers back in the day. Oh, yeah. I remember reading about that. Like, IBM was the big dog back then, right? Yeah. They were all about, the like, the most powerful processors exactly and you know what that's actually what kind of led to their downfall they were so focused on the hardware the processors that they completely missed the boat on the software side of things like the operating system the stuff that actually made computers usable for everyday people oh wow so they were like too busy building the engine and forgot about the steering wheel pretty much and companies like apple they saw the bigger picture they nice. focused on the whole user experience and well they kind of took over yeah history lesson over but how does that relate to ai now well, the essay argues that the same thing could happen with AI today. Like mm. right now, the focus is all on building these massive, powerful language models, like the brains of AI. But are we paying enough attention to the operating system, the stuff that makes AI actually useful? You mean like those chatbots and AI assistants everyone's talking about? Exactly. Those are like the key to unlocking the real potential of AI, making it accessible to everyone. So it's not just about raw power anymore. It's about how we interact with it, mm -hmm. how we make it work for us. Right. And the essay kind of throws out this question, like, is OpenAI the company behind that amazing AI programmer? Are they falling into the same trap as IBM? Are they too focused on building bigger and better language models and not enough on the user experience? So they're saying OpenAI could actually stumble, even though they're leading the pack right now. That's the question they're posing. And it's a pretty thought-provoking one, because if history repeats itself, well, things could get interesting. Oh, so let's say the future of AI is all about the operating system and the apps. Mm. What does that even look like? What are we talking about here? Well, think about something like ChatGTT. It's built on top of OpenAI's powerful language model. But its success isn't just because of that. It's the interface, the voice interactions, the plugins, all those things create a user-friendly experience. So those are like the apps of the AI world. Yeah. The tools that let us actually do things with this incredible technology. Exactly. And the essay makes this really compelling point that just like with PCs, the companies that create the best apps and build the best platforms, they're the ones who are going to shape the future of AI. Whoa. So it's not just a tech race anymore. It's a design race. A user experience race. You got it. But hold on. There's another piece of this puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. The data these AI models need to learn. Don't they need like massive amounts of data to function? You're talking about the data wall, and it's a huge challenge. The thing is, these language models, they're trained on text, tons and tons of text, and they've pretty much used up all the easily available text on the internet. Wait there. They've read everything, like every article, every blog post. Pretty much. Which begs the question, what happens when there's no more data left to learn from? That's a good question. Yeah. So are they just stuck? Have they hit a wall? Well, not exactly. This limitation has actually pushed researchers to get creative. Instead of just focusing on data quantity, they're now exploring ways to make AI think more efficiently. Making AI think better. What does that even mean? One approach is called chain of thought prompting. It's about teaching AI to break problems down into steps to think logically instead of just relying on brute force data crunching. So it's like less memorization and more like actual understanding. Exactly. And that could be a game changer because it means AI could become more insightful, more capable of coming up with creative solutions. This is mind blowing. We've gone from AI programmers to the history of PCs, to the limits of data, and now AI that can think. What's next? Well, now that we've kind of set the stage, let's dive into how different companies are approaching this whole AI revolution. Because things are about to get really interesting. It's crazy how different companies are tackling this whole AI thing, right? Yeah, it's like everyone's trying to figure out their angle. Yeah. Like we were saying before about open AI maybe being a little too obsessed with building the most powerful AI. Right. Like they're all about the brains. Yeah. But even they haven't completely ignored the whole user experience thing. Yeah, true. Like chat GPT. Yeah. It's actually pretty easy to use. Even I can figure it out. And I'm not exactly a tech whiz. Exactly. That's one of the reasons it's been so successful. They made it accessible to pretty much everyone. And they keep adding new features. Voice input plugins. Even a Mac app now. 
It's like they're building their own little AI world around ChatGPT. Which kind of goes back to that PC analogy. They're not just building the processor, they're building the whole ecosystem. Exactly. And that's smart because it gives them a head start. While other companies are still trying to catch up with the raw power of their AI, OpenAI is already building a user base, a community. So they're playing the long game, thinking ahead. But what about the other big players like Meta and Amazon? What are they up to? Those two are interesting because they're coming at it from totally different directions. Meta, with their whole social media thing, they're approaching AI from the angle of accessibility and cost. Accessibility. How so? Well, think about it. Meta's all about connecting people, right? AI can help them do that even better, like personalized content, new ways to interact online. And they're also focused on making AI cheaper to use, more affordable. So for them, AI is a way to make their platforms even more engaging, even stickier. Exactly. And get this. They actually open source their large language model. Anyone can use it. Really? Why would they do that? Yeah. Seems kind of counterintuitive. It might seem that way, but it's actually pretty clever. By open sourcing it, they're encouraging more people to develop AI applications. It's like a crowdsourcing approach. Right. More brains working on the problem. So they're betting that a rising tide lifts all boats. Interesting. So that's Meta. What about Amazon? They're a whole different beast. Totally. Amazon's approach is all about leveraging their existing infrastructure their cloud computing platform, AWS. They're basically saying, hey, we've got the computing power you need to train your massive AI models. Come use our platform. So they're not even trying to build the best AI. They're selling the shovels in the gold rush. Pretty much. And it's a smart move yeah. because no matter who wins the AI race, Amazon's going to profit. That's some serious business savvy. So we've got OpenAI building their platform, Meta focusing on making AI accessible, and Amazon providing the infrastructure. It's like a whole new kind of tech competition. It is, and it's not over yet. There's one more player we need to talk about. You mean Apple, the elephant in the room? The one that's been surprisingly quiet amidst all this AI hype? Yeah, they're always so secretive. But they've been investing in AI for years, right? They have, very quietly. But their recent partnership with OpenAI that's a big deal. It suggests they're finally ready to show their hand. So we might actually see some Apple-branded AI stuff soon, like an AI assistant or something. It's definitely possible. And if they do, it's going to be interesting to see how they approach it. Apple's all about that seamless user experience, that sleek design. Combine that with OpenAI's AI power. Could be a game changer. It's like watching a high-stakes poker game. Everyone's got their cards close to their chest, waiting for the right moment to make their move. And the stakes are high. The future of AI is up for grabs. But with all this talk about technology and competition, there's one thing we haven't really talked about. What's that? The human element. What does all this mean for us, for society? That's the big question, isn't it? We can get so caught up in the tech stuff that we forget about the bigger picture. Exactly. Yeah. And that's something we need to be talking about. Because AI is going to have a huge impact on our lives, whether we like it or not. So it's not just about the technology itself. It's about the human side of the equation. Right. And that's what we'll explore in the final part of our deep dive. So we've talked about like all the crazy advancements in AI. Yeah. The tech, the history, the data stuff, okay. even how different companies are trying to like, you know, win the AI race. Yeah. But I think for me, it always comes back to the same question. Like, what does this all mean for us regular people? Yeah. That's the real heart of the matter, isn't it? It's easy to get caught up in the hype, the shiny new tech. But AI is going to have a real impact on our lives, you know? Yeah. How we work, how we communicate, how we live. And this video essay we've been talking about, it makes a really good point. It says that if the future of AI is all about these apps, these tools we use to interact with AI, then we have to be really careful about how those apps are designed, how they're used. Yeah. Because even if the AI itself is, like, ethical or whatever, right. if the app is designed to do something bad... Well, that's a problem. <laughs> exactly. It's not just about the AI. It's about the intentions behind the applications, the way they're implemented, the consequences. We've seen this before with technology. Things get used in ways that weren't intended, sometimes with like really bad results. Yeah. It's like you create something amazing with the best intentions, mm -hmm. and then it gets twisted or misused. And with AI, the stakes are even higher. Definitely. We're talking about systems that can process information, make decisions, even take actions faster and more efficiently than any human. That's a lot of power. And it needs to be handled responsibly. It's kind of scary when you think about it. Like, we're at this crucial point. We're on the verge of this AI revolution. And we have to decide what kind of future we want. Do we just blindly accept whatever AI tools come along? Or do we step back and ask ourselves what we're really creating here? That's the question we need to be asking. Right now, while the technology is still developing, we need to think about 
the values we want to embed in these systems, the safeguards, the potential problems. And it's not just the responsibility of the tech companies. It's all of us. Yeah. We all need to be informed, engaged, and willing to challenge the status quo. Exactly. Because the future of AI, it's not set in stone. It's something we're all creating together through the choices we make, the conversations we have, and the actions we take. This is deep, man. We started with this simple question. What does it mean when AI becomes a top programmer? And it's led us to this huge conversation about history, philosophy, ethics, even what it means to be human in this new age of AI. And I think that's the point, the future of AI. It's not just about the technology. It's about us, about humanity, and what we want to do with this incredible power. So I guess the takeaway here is stay informed, stay engaged, and let's make sure we build a future with AI that benefits everyone. Well said. I think that's a perfect place to wrap up this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. And remember, the future is in our hands. Let's make it a good one.